Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and you, as you may notice, I'm wearing my brand new t-shirt, which is <laughs> Snoopy and his doghouse, just laying down, joining in with Woodstock, and it says, to-do list, nothing. That's pretty much what I'm doing nowadays, absolutely nothing, because I'm stuck in quarantine, but I, I am doing something sometimes, you know, I am watching something, doing all this other stuff at home. Sometimes I do go out, but I haven't been going out that much. Yeah, well, what can you do? So anyway, um, as a result of that, I want to do a peanut special. It's been a while since I've done one, since uh, back in May. And this one is called, Play It Again, Charlie Brown. Which was a quote directly from the movie Casablanca. You know, when they said, Play It Again, Sam. Or at this rate, Sam, play it. Or Sam, play it again. <laughs> that sort of way. Um, yeah, this was a peanut special that aired prime time on CBS on March 28, 1971. This was actually marked as the first peanut special to air in the 70s. Yes, starting in 1971 was also the first special to focus uh, on a different character other than Charlie Brown and Snoopy, which happens to be Schroeder. Yeah, the yellow-haired kid, blonde, he was very fascinated with his icon and idol, Beethoven. I mean, that explains why he goes around playing Beethoven music and practicing on his piano. And he does that all the time even if he tries to ignore Lucy Bampelt because Lucy on the other hand falls madly in love deeply with Schroeder but it backfires it also marks the first time that a different voice actor replaces uh, the original which is Peter Robbins as we all know who does the voice of Charlie Brown since the Christmas special uh, this time it's Chris Inglis, who almost matches uh, Robbins' voice, so it's pretty close. But it makes sense, though, because Robbins is already, you know, hitting puberty. So they still had the, the original voice actors in that particular case. At that point on, it would mark the fact that as time goes along, they are going to be replaced by other voice actors, all which are kids, because that's exactly what Bill Melendez had in mind. He always wants them to be mostly kids, not adults. And Bill Melendez being the only one to voice uh, Snoopy and Woodstock, which I know Woodstock joins, he's been doing that ever since, before his death. Yeah. So, um, let's begin with the special. It stars Danny Yaim as Schroeder. Pamela Ferdin as Lucy Van Pelt, Stephen Shea as Linus Van Pelt, Linda Mendelssohn as Frida, Hilary Momberger as Sally Brown, Chris Inglis as Charlie Brown and Pickpan, Christopher DeFeria as Pepper and Patty, Bill Melendez as Snoopy, and just for the case of Bean, <laughs> yes, they did use an unnamed female voice and provided by those PTA meetings uh, through the spray cans. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. It's created and written by Charles M. Schultz and it's directed by Bill Melendez. The special begins when Schroeder at his home is practicing and playing his piano which is leads to the Beethoven music and then suddenly he spotted um, all these musical notes that shows a face of Lucy already smiling and leaning towards those musical notes and he he just looks straight in the eye breaking the fourth wall saying don't tell me I accustomed to that face and just continues to play Snoopy came and just lay on, on his piano you know already yawning and ready to fall asleep and then <laughs> apparently uh, Schroeder just 
bang on the keys and <laughs> it, it just have them fly up in the air and then next thing you know I mean he, he continues to just dance his way around until he just zooms out and winds up dancing with Linus I mean <laughs> which I know Lucy was just telling them you know Sooner or later, you know, everyone's going to start looking and laughing at you when you're dancing with a dog. And and then the Linus says, well, 500 years from now, no one will ever know. <laughs> yeah. Lucy came back to Schroeder's house and trying her best to be infatuated with Schroeder and her willingness to do anything to win his affections, no matter what. But she became very frustrated with her perpetual failures. I mean, you even got Frida to join too, just leaning on um, his piano, the same way that Lucy does. So he just um, kept telling him that, don't you hate it when people are telling you that, that they hate you for playing the piano all day? Just just do whatever you can but then it's like Frida's just saying exactly what she thinks she just lay around just listening to music and then well she blew it <laughs> I was just saying I'll just take a small glass on her piano anyway yeah I mean Lucy just goes around getting all the advice which is amazing because Usually, Lucy always gives advice to Charlie Brown through the psychiatric help, but this time it's really Lucy who actually gets psychiatric help, only it's Snoopy. <laughs> Lucy also tried to get advice um, mostly from Charlie Brown, but she just keeps interrupting him completely. Yeah, even tells him that, he, that Schroeder's more wishy washier than he is. Um, interesting enough, she even tried to get advice from Snoopy, considering that Snoopy actually kisses her. <laughs> and Snoopy was all mad because <laughs> she got kissed by a dog, you know, dog germs. Yeah, and then just when <laughs> Snoopy was definitely dressing up, you know, like the psychiatrist, that he just gave her the advice and then she wants to give me and Schroeder the big kiss. and. <laughs> and he's saying, Ah, oh, I've been kissed by a girl. I've been poisoned. <laughs> well, getting tired of that, um, she opens to Sally and Pepper and Patty. I mean, Sally was already, you know, getting mad at the whole world, especially with her jump rope. But it, she does indeed love Linus. Um, and Pepper and Patty however gave her a solution was to come up with an idea to actually support a PTA program and have them invite to play the piano joining in with uh, the entire band which of course had to be the combo you know with Charlie Brown and the guitar uh, Snoopy <laughs> in the, uh, the cello and Pigpen on the drums. Yeah, he's the drummer. <laughs> um, but of course, Pepper and Patty had advised for, for Schroeder that Beethoven is out, so he can't play Beethoven music over there. So it has to be rock and roll. And that's the case. But um, therefore, um, Schroeder was thanking her for the invitation enough to send Lucy skyrocket onto cloud nine right there because <laughs> that's where he'll finally be able to accept but since Schroeder doesn't want to be able to play with the group if they're not going to let him play Beethoven then he's out Charlie Brown, Pigpan, Snoopy and yes even Lucy we're going to feel very disappointed that he might let them down. 
But if that's the case, because he doesn't want to feel bad, he decided he'll just join in right away. But he felt like he sold out completely. Like he's not going to forgive himself, but if he doesn't play with them, you know, he's not going to forgive him for what he has. Well, he had to face the music and tell them all the way uh, at school, already getting ready for the program, telling them that, I'm sorry, I can't do it. You just got to continue without me. So they were disappointed. But I guess what made it up for it was, well, Lucy had brought in those spray cans. <laughs> Because um, earlier on, she brought in a spray can that actually plays Beethoven music, as you can actually hear. Well, she also brought in the spray cans for the PTA meeting, so that's where you hear that female voice and the entire crowd, you know, getting ready for the meeting. And then that's where they get to the presentation. That's really cool. So, anyway... Later on, Lucy Business Schroeder again offered him when she comments about Beethoven by not making all the way to Nashville, Tennessee for a concert. And Schroeder is being completely insulted, leaves, and Lucy was just also crypting with Beethoven that he probably won't be able to play in, in Lou Orleans either. He probably would have made it in New Orleans Eater. After that, she just took out the transistor radio and just listened to music. And special ends this way. <laughs> um, not a bad special. I mean, it's it's basically focusing more on Schroeder and just playing his beloved uh, Beethoven music because that's all he loves to do anyway, and he and he loves to practice. Hoping this would be a special time for him to make his debut for the concert, but sadly that wasn't the case since they couldn't allow him to play Beethoven. But it's also Lucy just trying her best to actually fall in love with Schroeder, you know, by giving him a big kiss <laughs> or trying to tell him exactly what love is or or anything else, but it just fails completely. But that's always the case, too. But with that special, too, I mean, I love all the moments, too. You know, especially when you have Charlie Brown along with Pig Pan and, and Snoopy just playing jazz and rock and roll. So it gives it a nice snappy beat right there. It almost feels more, more 60-ish that way. But even though this is early 70s. And then, you know, Lucy is just telling them, maybe you're right, maybe it will work. Well, if that was the case. Um, of course, all the, um, the, the segments that they put into it, into one, because it almost feels like actual segments, are all from the comic strips. So you're probably already f familiar with that if you had read them all. And they would later use part of that on the Charlie Brown Snoopy show, too. So that was the case here. Even though it wasn't much of a big cast, of course, you do have, um, you know, Lucy, Linus, Frida, Sally, Pepper and Patty, Charlie Brown, Pig Pan, and Snoopy to join the uh, just Schroeder. Um, the score uh, for the special, though, yep. Um, they had like plenty of them too, like they had the piano, sonata, number no. three, and C major, opus two, which is Allegro con brio. Uh, they, they had symphony number no. five and C minor, opus 67, uh, among other different uh, tunes here. But then the Ben Scarardi, you know, the composer for the special, as, as opposed to the 60s and 70s and even the movies, uh, that he composed before his death. Um, 
they even had uh, played again Charlie Brown, which is an actually called Charlie's Blues and Charlie Brown's Blues. And there's even the old Good Grief and Lucifer's Lady. I mean, th there's a lot of tunes that you have to choose from, and, and it just blends so well. And the animation just looks even better than before. It was getting to the point where they're doing a new, a new set of changes here. So now that it's becoming more exactly what the comic strips looked like at the time. Yeah. However, though, um, no official soundtrack had been released for Play It Again, Charlie Brown, which I know that's a shame. But I guess at that point on, they may have blended in on some of the soundtracks uh, for other ones. Because I, I know there have been several CDs, as well as records and cassettes, tapes, to actually put in some of the music from those specials. Otherwise, you know, you have to end up taking it on cue you know, through MP3s, or iTunes for that matter. If that was the case. Yeah. Well, anyway. Still, I mean... Excellent special. Um, it's, it's just sad that maybe there could have been more to it with the story. I mean, maybe Schroeder could have had tried to help out their friends, uh, you know, benefit for the PTA, and have probably the best concert they'll ever have. But sadly, that wasn't the case. But oh well. Well, what can you do? <laughs> So anyway, that's Play It Again, Charlie Brown, and I give the special four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.